everyone, this is Zach here. Uh, today I'm going to walk through using Ansible to integrate with basically any API and leveraging the ansible.builtin.uri module to pull data. So for my example, I'm going to use the movie database API. Uh, just keep it fun and interesting and also it's, it's a good example of an API that exists out there that doesn't have a collection um, and you may want to pull some information about a particular user. So the first step when I'm going through this process is I typically go to the API documentation to figure out how I need to authenticate with this API. So for the movie database, if I go to developer.themoviedb.org, um, I found the documentation for the, the authentication section here on the left. This is always a good place to start. It's got a nice guide for generating a session ID, which is what you will need in order to pull uh, user-specific information from the API. Um, a lot of this API is actually publicly available um, and read-only if you just want to get information about a particular movie, but I wanted to show the authentication steps, so I'm going to pull my favorite movies that I have favorited um, with my account. So a lot of APIs have a document like this. Um, if they don't, it could be a little bit more investigation on your part, um, but in this particular case, we can see that there's a few steps that you need to do. Um, the first one being creating a new request token, the second one being having the user authorize that request token, and then lastly we'll create a session ID using the authorized request token, um, and then we can use the session ID in future requests. So you might be wondering, okay, how do we do number two because we're writing an Ansible playbook, we don't have a user that's going to be interacting with the request itself. So this guide, it is missing a piece where it mentions how you can do that, but I happen to see over here on the side there is a nice, um, there's a couple options for creating a session. So I wanted to try creating a session with login. I clicked over here and you can see here this method allows you to validate your request token with the username and password. So this is something we can do with Ansible because there's no user interaction, it's just an API call where we give the username and password. It does say here that this will replace step three. Um, I believe that's an, a bug in their documentation because if we come back here, um, it's actually step two, right? We're having the user authorize the request token. Um, and I knew that because this endpoint, when I it doesn't give you back a session ID, it just gives you the request token, which you then use to create the session ID. So now that I've kind of stepped through my thought process for figuring out what I need to do, now I want to step through the process for actually writing that in Ansible. So I open up my VS Code instance here, clear some of these messages, and I'm first going to start with the variables that I need. So for the TMDB API, I need just, I created the API base URL, of course it's just variableized to make it simpler when I'm writing my tasks. Um, my TMDB account ID, this is going to be useful for when I want to pull specific information about my account. And then lastly, I've got these three uh, more sensitive variables, the API key, username, and password, um, which I'm going to use the environment lookup. Um, and the reason why I do that is because using the environment lookup when developing locally translates pretty well to using a custom credential type in the Ansible Automation Platform. And this allows you to obfuscate the need for someone using this to need to see the secrets, they can just use the credential if they have the permissions to do so. So to use the environment locally, when I'm developing Ansible playbooks, I usually create a Python virtual environment. So the way I would do that in this particular case, which you can see here, I actually already have one activated, but the command to do this is python-m, vnv is the module that I'm going to use, and then .vnv is the name of the vnv I want to, the virtual environment that I want to create. Um, you can think of virtual environment as just an isolated environment for Python libraries that you want to use when running within that environment. And this allows you to not have conflicts across all your different Python projects on the same machine. So I'm not going to hit enter there because I've already created mine. But if I were to be doing this for the first time, I may come in here and I may kind of explore around here. But one of the important things is the virtual environment, the bin directory, this activate script. This is what you run to effectively activate your virtual environment. So I would say for source uh, virtual environment bin activate. Um, mine's already activated, which I can see here in my terminal. So I'll delete that. If I wanted to deactivate it, when you source that 
script, it actually creates a deactivate function. So you can just type deactivate and it will get you out of there. There's a couple things I want to add to make sure these environment variables are available to me. So the activate script is the one that's used. I created a backup just so I could hide my secrets, um, but it's the exact same script. So if you go into your activate script, this is what you'll see. Um, I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom. So this is what I've recently added, um, are just some environment variables. So when I'm working in this virtual environment, I have access to them. You can see here I've created this TMDB API, TMDB API key, username, and password. Um, if I scroll up a little bit, I also always add to the deactivate function. I unset those variables just so they don't live when I exit the virtual environment. So how do we map those? If you, can, if you remember here, we had that lookup where we pull from the environment. So this is going to directly pull the values that I've set in the virtual environment activation script into my playbook, which I can then use as variables. So I like to do this in my development process just to make sure that one, it will translate really well when I do want to move from local development to production and running an Ansible automation platform. Um, it's really easy to inject environment variables using a custom credential type, which again I'll show in uh, a few minutes. Um, and two, it's just, it, it's kind of become my development pattern. It, it works well for me and I think it will work for you as well. So once we've got those variables set up, we can now start working through the steps we need to go ahead and get a session ID. So I've already written them out, but I first want to go ahead and just go one by one. So the first one here is to create that request token. Um, what we'll do is we'll use the URL. So if I come back to the documentation, I'm going to click on the one here for creating a request token. I can see that it's basically the authentication slash token slash new. Um, and then it's a git. So if I come back over here to translate to the ansible.builtin.uri, I've got my authentication token new. Um, I do need to use my API key that I have created and saved to the API key environment variable. There are instructions on that in the blog post on how to get that. And then I'll do method get. One of the key things here is this register request token. So when I register to our request token, um, I can then leverage this uh, down the line in future requests. So let me go ahead and run this really quickly, just as is. Okay, so now you can see I ran that task to get a new request token, and I've got this verbose output here. And if I scroll down, there's a lot of information about like how I called the module, but what I'm really interested in is that response, so that JSON key and then the request token. So this is a request token I can now validate with my user login. Um, and the way I would reference it is I've got this variable r underscore request underscore token, and then that will have a key for JSON, and then within that key you'll have request token. So how does that look? If I go here, and I'll run this again without as much verbosity, but I'd have that debug statement, so it'll print it out nicely for me. So here you can see our request token dot just dot JSON dot request token has the value I need. So our next step is going to be to validate that token with the user login. So we'll go ahead and comment this step out. I'll go back to the API. So we want to create a session with login. I must say the documentation for this is not um, as verbose as I wish it was. So in this example, I do get that there's a post. And I get that there is the authentication token validate with login endpoint. Um, it doesn't actually tell me what to put in the body. Um, so when I run into this scenario, I usually just do some Googling. Um, and that's what I did. I found an example where what you need to post in the body is the username, password, and the request token that you want to validate. So I went ahead and built out the request for this with the URI module. I've got that new endpoint. Um, again, still passing my API key in the query. Um, and then my method here is post this time. I'm specifying that my body format is JSON. That, set, that sets the content type to application JSON. And then my body values are going to be my username, password, and request token. The username and password coming from those environment variables I set, and my request token are leveraging the uh, output from that initial step in our playbook. So let me go ahead and run this. Let me make sure all everything is all good. Um, cool, we got through that. Oh, let me go ahead and save. All right, so we got through that and got an OK. Um, in this task, I don't actually register anything because the output of this um, is not useful. Um, once we've made this command, we've validated that request token. 
um, and we already have the request token, so we don't need to save save any output here. The next and final step to go ahead and create that session ID is then going to be, if I come back here, create session. So here we've got a new endpoint for authentication session new. Um, it's a post again, and again, sorry, the, the uh, body documentation is not super clear, but again, I found it on Google, um, what I need to do, and that's just going to be passing that request token, right? So the request token has already been validated, and when I pass this in, I'll get a new valid session for that user login. So let's see. I'll go ahead and uncomment the set off query um, and run this. Just the whole thing. Um, and the reason why I do this set fact for the off query is so that um, I can simplify my future requests. So in the response of the R, the create session, let me go ahead and debug that out. Make that a little bit easier to see. I'm just going to copy this debug statement here. Come down. And instead of doing our request token.json, I'm going to do our session.json debug session. Just to show what that payload looks like. So as you can see, right, I get our session.json and session ID. I get this nice session ID. This is what I'll then use in future requests. Um, the way the TMDB API works is you pass it as a query parameter. Some other APIs may use a bearer token, um, so you set the authorization header, um, just various ways of doing a similar thing. Just go through the API documentation that you're trying to interact with and figure out where you need to put that information. Since I'm going to be reusing this over and over again, this API, this query parameters with the API key and the session ID, I went ahead and just made it a variable so I don't have to type this out for each task I want. So I saved it to this variable called tndb auth query. And now I'm going to go ahead and pull my favorite movies. Um, and the URL for this, if I go back to the documentation, now I'm getting into kind of the fun stuff. So if I go to account favorite movies, um, you can see this is the URL for it. So account slash count ID and then favorite movies, which matches to the URL I built here in Ansible. And then I also pass in my TMDB auth query, which has my API key and my session ID. And I'm going to save it to our favorite movies. I'm going to go ahead and comment out the debug statement as well so we can see what that output looks like. Voila, so we got some information back. As you can see, I've got, it looks like I've got three movies in my response. Um, the first one has a lot of information. We've got the ID of the movie, so maybe we could use that to pull even more information from TMDB. We've got the title, says Oppenheimer, um, recently watched, um, really good movie. Um, if I scroll down, this is a list, so I've got a few different IDs, right? Well, we also got Wonka in here, the new Wonka movie, and then Fight Club. So you may have a similar response from an API you're pulling from, right? If that response is too verbose, uh, I do recommend leveraging the built-in filter plugin to Ansible called JSON Query, which is a way that we can kind of filter and manipulate the data that we get back from, or really that we get from anywhere. Um, so what I'll do is I'll give an example of that. And what I mean by that is, let's say I just want a list of the titles, right? I don't want this list that has the original language, the popularity rating or anything like that. I don't really care. I just want to, I just want to know the titles. So I can write this cool JSON query that basically does a list projection on the results list from our favorite movies at JSON results. And it just grabs me the title for each one. So let's see what happens when I run this. I'll make sure I save it. Oh, I need to install JMS path in my virtual environment. So let me go ahead and do that real quick. You may run into that as well. Let me run this again. There we go. Um, so as you can see, the output's pretty cool, right? It's just a list of titles. I got Oppenheimer, Wonka, Fight Club. So you may be wondering, well, how did I know to do that? So JSON Query is a tool that I use pretty extensively with Ansible. It's a really nice way to wrangle your data um, and get into a structure that you want. Uh, writing out these queries is the important piece, right? This is where kind of the magic happens. Um, you give it an input object, which for me was the raw JSON response, and then you write this query and it gives you back nice output. For testing this, I highly recommend using JMS Path Tutorial. So uh, I have this linked in the article, but the JMS Path Tutorial, I can actually take output straight from 
Ansible. So if I scroll up here, let me take this JSON object. Oops, scroll down. Oh man, let's see. Let's see if that copied correctly. I'll paste it in here. Okay, so you can see it went null because I got this A here, so I backed this up. So the top key here, what if I type in just results? So cool. One of the awesome things about this website is I can paste in data that I'm working with. And again, obviously if you're using sensitive data, you know, mask the sensitive values so that it's not uploaded to a public site or anything like that. But this is a way you can play with your queries um, and do cool stuff. So the, by just typing results, I've selected the results key in the object. Let's say I want to do a list projection. I use this cool, this list um, element and there's a lot of information here on what you can do. A ton of examples if you scroll down which can help you build out your queries. And then I just want to pull the title. So I say dot .title. Now what if I wanted to pull the title and the release date? So I could do a list projection with multiple keys. So I could say title, title. And let's say I want to say release. And then if I scroll down here, let me find what the name of the release date key is. Cool, so release underscore date. And then if I do a closing bracket, see how that works? So I went ahead and projected not just the title, but also the release date. And now I've got a list of objects with the title and the release. Um, you can also kind of mess with the key names if you need to. If you want to change something, make it more relevant to you, you can do that as well. So scroll down here, there's a ton of cool things you can do. You can do slicing. Um, you can do filters um, as well. So I keep scrolling down. Keep going. all the way down, filter projections, right? So here's where you can start to say, okay, for my machines, I wanna grab ones where their state value is running. And apologies for my screen moving around. We've got a little puppy here that is clicking on the keyboard. So yeah, so you can see here, I've got this object that has a couple of, or three machines, A, B, and C, B is stopped, so I'm checking, and then I get a list of unstopped. So coming back to the article, I just wanted to kind of wrap things up um, I hope that was useful for you. I know it's a common thing that people are doing with Ansible and it's not always straightforward. Um, I've never been able to find a true guide for doing that. Um, so I just wanted to step through here and make sure that everything is clear um, and hopefully you're able to follow along. Um, you can try it with the Movie Database API. Feel free to try it with you know, a different API that you wanna integrate with. If you have questions, post here and I can see what I can do to help. Um, all the links that I walked through today I do want to say are, are linked here, the references at the bottom, um, the documentation for the TMDB API, kind of where you can find your, or set up your API key, and then where you can find your account ID. Um, and one last thing I want to note is that custom credential type for the movie database. Um, here on my doc site, I, I have a bunch of examples of custom credential types, um, and I created one for the movie database just where basically you set up the API URL, API key, username, password, and account ID. Um, and what it does is it actually will inject that into your environment. And you can see this is where it kind of maps back to using the virtual environment locally. When I run it in the platform, um, I can inject those values, both as extra vars, so you could use variables directly, or you could use environment variables. Um, and this custom credential setup will, will do that for you. So I hope you enjoy this video. Um, please, please comment if you have questions um, and reach out if there's any, you know, tangential examples you'd like to see. Thank you and have a good rest of your day.